Hi everybody, Stephen Kroll from Cybercrime Magazine. Uh, we're in our studios today for another Ask the CISO interview sponsored by Fortinet. I'm here with Deneen De Fiori. She is the Senior Vice President and Chief Information and Product Security Officer at GE Aviation. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? Thanks Good. for coming down Thank today. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure. So you graduated with a BS in biology. Were you thinking about the tech field when you graduated? No, not really. Um, I had aspirations to have a career in either healthcare um, systems and operations or pharmaceutical operations. You know, I always wanted to, you know, see if I could improve that system and you know make an impact on people's lives. No, no connection to technology at all. That's so interesting. So then, how did you really get started in the IT field? Because to go from biology to sure. Uh, yeah. technology. <laughs> not a not a not a real easy transition. Um, but yeah, so I was in uh, graduate school and I was interning at a healthcare system and I got into IT by accident. They were moving from a page a paper-based records to an electronic medical record system. And you know, I was on that project and through that experience, I really found that I uh, liked the technology more than the operations. I so I taught myself, you know, to learn to code, to script. I took more roles and jobs that would expand my knowledge of technology. I had roles that ranged from, you know, systems administration from Windows to Unix to managing middleware and databases and web um, applications uh, to ERP system. And then I just kept, you know, learning and learning and learning. Mm -hmm. So you did a little bit of everything at you the bet. beginning of your career. You bet. And it's a foundation that I really still pull from. Which I'm sure serves you exactly yeah. as you yeah. said what you're doing yeah. right now. Okay, so then how do you go from being sort of like a jack of all trades in the IT field to a CIO and then a CISO at a large enterprise? Sure, sure. You know, I wish I could say that I had a plan and, you know, I had this great recipe to follow. But again, it was kind of by accident. Um, I... I got to be a CIO because I spent the first, you know, portion of my career really, career really focusing on technology and learning mm -hmm. technology. And at some point I realized I wanted to then learn how to strategically apply technology to business problems. So there was an opening for a CIO role and I went for it and I got it. During my CIO role at uh, GE Energy, that's when I was really uh, you know, first exposed to cybersecurity, mm -hmm. like really, truly cybersecurity. Uh, we had a few incidents um, you know, through that role, and I was working through that role to help remediate. And it really just opened my eyes to a whole you know, aspect of technology that I didn't know existed. So you know, making uh, you know, quick decisions with limited information, you know, getting intelligence and trying mm -hmm. to figure out what to do next, it was really, really interesting. And it also had that technical aspect, which I, I really liked as well, too. So my two-year stint as a CIO turned into a nine year and plus counting run as a CISO. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking to myself, it sounds like you're sort of solving the puzzle while the pieces are still coming sure. at the same time. You bet. You bet. It's a, that's one of the things that I love about cybersecurity. Um, I'm a person who loves to be challenged mm -hmm. and, you know, solve messy problems and do things that people haven't done before. And we get that chance every day in cyber. It's a new world, right? Things, yeah. things change, threats evolved and, and you have to run with it. So again, as you said before, you were with uh, GE for 20 years. That's something you don't see a lot uh, these days. Can you tell me what that's been like? Sure. I mean, GE is a really big company. Uh, you know, I mentioned that before that, the GE I joined 20 years ago is not the GE that uh, is today. And being a company that solves some of the world's biggest challenges, you have to really, we're forced to evolve and change. So... You know, if you didn't know, GE Aviation is celebrating its 100th year as an aviation company. Oh, wow. So we have to innovate and continue to, you know, invent the future of light to stay relevant. So for me, being at GE was was great because I never really had to, felt like I had to leave to find the next mm -hmm. big thing. It, it's been it's been a great opportunity. That's awesome. Cybersecurity Ventures just released a report on women in cybersecurity. And we've recalculated the number to be about 20% of women in the field, which is still very low. Mm -hmm. I mean, we really need to get to uh, equality in terms of 50, you 50%. Bet. As a woman leader in the field, um, have you seen any changes since you first entered IT and or cybersecurity compared to now? Sure, yeah. I'm actually proud to say that uh, GE has 
three of its top most senior cybersecurity positions filled by women today. Okay. So um, I'm, I'm really proud about that. I've also seen, I think, as we're talking more about cybersecurity as a mainstream career, um, you know, it's in people are more attuned to it, right? They see it in the news. They see, you know, things impacting their lives daily. And it's more of a mainstream type topic in career. And I think also, you know, cybersecurity has a compelling factor, a human factor, right? It's to protect, to secure, mm -hmm. to nurture, right? I think women are starting to see that that's something that appeals to them and more women are, are thinking about it now. Yeah, it's something I never thought about. It's like, you're, you're the frontline defense, uh, right. like uh, police officers or firemen and, and doctors. Mm -hmm. uh, that's absolutely right. Uh, do you think there are more women that you see in CISO roles at Fortune 500 or Global 2000 companies as well? Yeah, I definitely think so. I, you know, I think the number continues to rise year after year, and, and to me, that's progress. Yeah, absolutely. And you're also on the front lines, I think, of helping and encouraging young women to enter the field. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what you're doing in that area? Yeah, sure. I think it's really important to uh, get uh, young women and girls exposed to uh, cybersecurity and technology in general. For GE, I lead or co-lead an effort called GE Girls. So what we do is we provide STEM opportunities and education to middle school girls. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we try to follow them. We call it camp to college. Okay. So we expose them once and then we continue to have interactions with them over their educational career. And, you know, a couple of years ago, a few women that were involved in that effort with me made it a priority to have cybersecurity in the curriculum. So they uh, do, did they created two lessons plan around cybersecurity that we mm -hmm. would teach at these camps. So you know, there's there's one lesson plan that's around you know secure coding and introduction to coding and what vulnerabilities are, so they get an understanding of you know secure development practices. And then the next uh, lesson plan is around um, uh, like a cybersecurity lab, like how to how do you know, identify online threats, you know, how do you look for phishing scams and things like that. So they're conscious and they're starting to think like a cybersecurity professional. And just by those two things, you know, adding those two things into the curriculum, we're exposing hundreds of girls across the globe each summer to cybersecurity. So I definitely think that building that pipeline is something that everybody really needs to think about. Yeah, it's super important. Mm -hmm. And that's something I was about to ask, like how many girls do you think have been involved with your program? Yeah, it, I mean, it's been, a while. It's been in uh, existence for about 11 years now. Oh, wow. Yeah, but cybersecurity has um, been added to the curriculum just about two years ago. Okay. We'll continue to evolve it, yeah. Yeah, but you never know. I mean, some of those girls maybe at the beginning have transferred sure. into cybersecurity just you like you did. You bet. Uh, do you have any advice then for young girls or young women who want to enter cybersecurity? Yeah, I think, um, you know, one of the things I want to be able to baseline with young women and girls is, you know, to it, cybersecurity isn't about sitting, just sitting behind a computer hacking away at things, <laughs> right? You don't have to wear a hoodie. You know, I don't even own a hoodie, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't. So um, I want them to understand that there's a it, cybersecurity. The scope is is large, mm -hmm. right? And it's expanding day to day. So you have things like um, you know the the application security, but you also have risk management that are mm -hmm. you know appealing careers to girls and women as well too. So you know give it a chance, and there's a lot of transferable skills that come into play. You don't have to be a a hacker to be into cybersecurity. Yeah, which is something that I thought about. Yeah, you, know, you had to know how to code, or you had yeah. to be. Um, the stereotypical right. uh, guy in the hoodie, and I'm glad that, right. you know. I like designer shoes and handbags, so that's what <laughs> my thing is. <laughs> I like nice watches. <laughs> yeah. Could you help our audience understand what you're responsible for securing and protecting at GE Aviation? Sure, yeah. GE Aviation is a company of uh, around 55,000 employees in over 80 um, sites around the globe. And really, when I think about my job, I think about it as securing the GE Aviation business portfolio. So of course it's around you know securing, protecting, and defending our IT systems and networks and things like that. But it's also about protecting the thousands of operational technology devices that we use to develop and produce our, our products mm -hmm. like jet engines. And then I'm also responsible for the cyber assurance of our products that we've put on planes. So that is, you know, really the whole portfolio of, of GE Aviation. And it's so funny, as I've uh, said before, I was watching some of your videos, and you always talk about planes as flying networks. Sure. Could yeah. you just explain a little bit what you mean by that? Sure. I mean, as, as aircraft um, are designed today, they're becoming more and more E-enabled, right? Um, and there's 
there's so much capability on, in software on mm -hmm. the planes now, and they have to constantly exchange data and communicate with um, the systems not only on the plane, but with the ground and supporting okay. systems as well too. So it's it's really um, you know things that were manual and analog are now becoming digital and automated um, in the cockpit and in the rest of the the plane. And there's so many variables involved. You bet. Uh, instead of just being in the plane, you have I guess the airports and then. All yes. The people who are working there. How yeah, does that work? yeah, definitely. Um, we think of the aviation sector as a connected ecosystem. Everybody is dependent on one mm -hmm. another. Um, we all share each other's risks, whether we like it or not. Okay. So airlines are dependent on airframers and suppliers like GE Aviations. They are dependent on the airports. Um, our assets and the airline's assets are mobile. They fly mm -hmm. all over the world with different levels of standards and securities in okay. different places. So approaching um, the threats and risks in aviation has to be you know, done collaboratively and collectively to really move the needle. What we're trying to get to as well, something we really want to talk about is we're experiencing this massive shift in how businesses are handling data and apps and then even IT infrastructures. Uh, without diving deep into technological aspects of cloud security, what is your 30,000 foot view or what's your view from the airplane sure. <laughs> uh, about the cloud? Sure. Yeah. So I think um, cloud technologies are really transforming um, um, the way people do business now. And it's a good thing. It's actually a really good thing. Um, th for security professionals, though, I'm, I'm, I want to consider a couple of things, right? The pace of cloud adoption is easy, and the businesses and our teams are usually consuming it before we even have a chance to think about securing it. So that's always a challenge to kind of get ahead of it, right? Mm -hmm. The other thing, too, is that um, as, a, as a CISO or a cybersecurity professional, there's lots of cloud environments, right? And the variation causes a lot of, I'll say, lack of visibility and inefficiency in our work. So trying to apply a standard set of security policies and approaches across you know, different clouds is, is, is a challenge. And we're working to try to make it seamless, but it, it's, it's hard right now. Are there any types of conversations that CISOs are having in terms of collaborating about this, especially in the aviation ecosystem? Yeah, so I think, um, you know, like I mentioned, we we really do think about the aviation industry as a, as a at collectively, right? Um, we, we just got finished, actually, with a series of CISO roundtables that mm -hmm. were sponsored by the Aviation ISAC. Okay. So we had about 30 uh, or... CISOs from about 30 aviation companies around the world come together and talk about risks and threats like cloud, right? And what are standards, what are approaches, what are best practices, and then how do we work together to move the needle going forward? So we understand that we have to, you know, share and come up to the same level of maturity and capability. Okay. So we're making that a priority in the aviation sector. That's really good. Yeah. Thanks for telling me that. Uh, and the Internet of Things devices. What type of things are you most concerned with when you think about securing any enterprise and the aviation industry? Yeah, so when with things in my world are really <laughs> typically OT devices, so okay. operational technology devices that help us either you know, design or manufacture our products or introduce um, advanced manufacturing te techniques like additive printing or okay. 3D, 3D printing. But it also opens new risks because that is a completely digital process. That file that contains dimensions, properties, materials, things that were, you know, the secret sauce in different systems are now one in one file. Oh, wow. So, you know, that's a critical piece of IP, you know, intellectual property that we need to protect. There's also another an aspect of um, of additive that translates across the OT space, right? There, there could be a potential soft target for uh, either attackers or insiders to not hack the systems, but introduce faults or change the properties of um, the part that's being printed mm -hmm. to you know, introduce a flaw that may fail or sabotage something later, right? So not saying that that is happening, but there's potential. So we have to look at those threat scenarios and models and plan for them. Okay, thank you. And how do you go about training people to do that? Yeah, so um, I invest a lot it's a lot of time and money in training for my people. I think my my finance leader actually joked with me. She's like, "Are you sending your team to Harvard for training?" <laughs> because my training budget was a little large this year. But I think it's really important to invest in um, continuous learning and upskilling our people. Though technology changes at a pace that 
um, is, is immense right now. And we have to have people that are capable to be able to do that. So training is a big deal. Um, as well as, uh, you know, collaboration and sharing. So we win together as a team, our mm -hmm. success is as a team, and knowledge is power. So that collaboration and just-in-time learning from a cross-functional team, I really make that a priority for us to be able to all be, all be you know, collectively smarter. That's good. And are you finding uh, a gap in terms of trying to fill employees? So Cybersecurity Ventures sure. predicts that there's going to be 3.5 million unfilled cybersecurity positions globally yeah. by 2021. Um, is it a challenge for you to find new and good people? Yeah, it absolutely is a challenge. I think I have 50 jobs right now that we are openly and actively recruiting right now. So we're all competing for the same people, same pool of talent, right, mm -hmm. across the industry. There's more work than there are people to... Uh, to, to get the job done right now. So totally, totally experiencing that. And that's why we need to get more young people and you bet. hopefully young girls in the field. So you bet. Yeah, your initiatives are <laughs> working there. Uh, what do you think about cross-training IT workers? So if you have these people who were like you at the beginning mm -hmm. of your career, um, do you think they could fill the roles in terms of cybersecurity? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, it's really an imperative that everybody's going to have to lean into. Like I just said, there's more there's more work than we have people to do it, right? So leaning into retraining, upskilling, and hiring for potential as mm -hmm. well, um, not the 97 you know, different uh, domains of cybersecurity that we list on every job okay. description that no one could ever qualify for, right? So I think we all have to do that and start to you know, really take a chance on people mm -hmm. and give them the tools and resources to be able to do that. We've had a lot of success with um, people from IT or engineering come mm -hmm. over to the cybersecurity team, learn um, based on their foundation, and be successful, right? I think, you know, some of the time I get, you know, like a little, little, it's a little jab, but they're joking from my IT peers around, once you expose people to cybersecurity and they're learning what we do mm -hmm. and they're excited about it, they don't want to, they don't want to go back to IT, but that's fine with me. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we'd be interested to know if you have any advice for other CISOs, uh, whether in aviation or any other enterprise format. Sure. You know, I think um, it's a theme that we talked about already. It's really around... Um, collaboration and sharing. Um, we are all trying to solve the same problems. Mm -hmm. You know, the financial services industry or the aviation industry, we all have our nuances and things that are specific to us. But in the end, we're, all, we're trying to fight the same battle, right? So collectively approaching it is better. Building trusted relationships, we can get further, you know, I mean, further ahead of the threat that way if we do it. Yeah, we're all doing the same fight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How do CISOs collaborate with each other? Do you have a network of peers that you work with? Yeah, sure. I, I have a, my go-to network of peers for sure. I'm able to call them, text them, reach out to see if what I'm thinking is, you know, in the ballpark or share best practices. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really good way to, um, to you know, approach uh, just-in-time learning. So I definitely have my go-to network. Yeah, it's just like few minds are better than one. Yeah. And what about these conferences and organizations that you're involved with? Can you explain about them some more? Sure. I, I definitely am involved in, um, you know, some cybersecurity focused uh, initiatives with the Executive Women's Forum. Um, it's a, you know, one of the largest uh, 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 industry, I'll say, associations for women in uh, privacy, security, and risk. Mm -hmm. So I do a lot with them. Um, women in technology, I do a lot with them as well, too. And, and the list goes on. There's a lot of GE-specific things as well, too. But, you know, m my reason for getting involved is to make sure that, um, you know, I'm learning, mm -hmm. I'm get you know, I mean, I'm understanding what people are thinking, what, you know, what trends, what what I what ideas other people have, and that we're sharing back as well too. So it's a great opportunity to really kind of get into the the field instead of just being focused in in my little world. Yeah, absolutely. You have to broaden your perspectives yeah. if you're going to work in cybersecurity. For sure, for sure. Okay. Thank you for coming down for another Ask the CISO series sponsored by Fortinet. You're welcome. Thanks uh, for having me.